I wanted to revisit the strategic frequency acquisition process that I released about two weeks ago, which is a technique any astrophotographer can use to continue acquiring good information during any phase of the moon, including even a very bright full moon. Since the release of that video, I've had a chance to do some experimentation with additional information and have found a way to refine data captured under moonlights even further. So I wanted to let you know how to do that. And I also wanted to take a moment to give a shorthand version of how to go about this strategy. The last video was rather long because it was complete. I wanted to walk the viewer through every step of the process. One needs to apply moon defense strategies, such as those that I covered in my video, six strategies to keep on imaging when the moon is bright. Because while strategic frequency acquisition is a very powerful process and will let you sort of punch through the moonlight and get good information, you have to take steps to make sure the information is good. So I'm going to keep this video very concise and eminently practical. I'll start by addressing a question about filters that's been brought up by several persons. The question is simple. What kind of filters are required? So strategic frequency acquisition does not require any particular filters. It is not a narrow band technique. And in fact, should work just fine whether or not you're using a one-shot color camera or a mono camera shooting RGB or LRGB or narrow band. Strategic frequency acquisition works by removing the high frequency part of images that were shot when the moon was bright. High frequency information takes a long time to gather, but it's very resistant to moonlight. So high frequency information can be acquired when the moon is bright and then applied to low frequency information that was gathered when the moon was darker and more manageable. Due to a lack of bright moons on cloudy nights, I have so far only been able to test the procedure on LRGB information and LRGB information combined with HA information. So there is yet hard testing to be done to confirm this, but theoretically, I can see no reason whatsoever that one could not use strategic frequency acquisition with information captured through narrowband techniques, LRGB techniques, RGB techniques, OSC techniques, or other techniques for that matter. Because ultimately, all images are comprised of low and high frequency information. So I mentioned that I found a way to further refine the high frequency information captured under bright moonlight. It's actually quite simple. Here is another image of 7635, the bubble nebula, with a different color scheme that I've been working on. I'm using the LRGB information to kind of emulate SHO, but it's not relevant here. Let me just get all that part of the data out of here. So I'll just delete it real quick. All right, now we're down to the high layer, high frequency information that was shot during the full supermoon, sitting above the base layers. I've marked those layers with red tabs on the right to make them easier to distinguish. Now I've made the information from September 18th invisible. Let's just work on the information from September 19th. In the high layer, high frequency information from September 19th, I'll open the levels tool. Then I'm going to click and grab the gamma slider. Watch what happens to the image as I drag it up. This mirror of moonlight withdraws from the darker regions, including the darker regions between the lines of definition, giving this high layer high frequency information sharper detail. Let's repeat the process on the information from September 18th. I'll make that layer visible, and then open the Levels tool. Once again, I'll click and grab the Gamma slider and drag it to the right. Watch what happens to the image as Gamma contracts the moonlight from the darker regions of the high-frequency information. Darker regions are cleared up, the dark spaces between high-frequency definition are sharpened, and overall the image becomes sharper and crisper. You can then, at your option, go back and add synergistic sharpening to each of these layers to further sharpen everything up and make it look even better. A point of note though, don't constrict the gamma on the base layer high frequency information. It doesn't help there because the base layer high frequency information does not have much moonlight contamination in it. Remember, the base layer is the information that you shot on nights when there was a manageable moon or no moon at all. It's where you get your color and light from, which you're later adding the high frequency information captured during moonlight. Now, let me show you another image to show you how effective this technique is. Here is IC5146 processed in the original way using synergistic sharpening, as covered in my previous video, How to do Astrophotography During a Moon Phase. And here is IC5146 with gamma contraction used to control the moon smear within the high layer high frequency information. Notice how much using gamma to constrict moonlight pollution within the high layer high frequency information has improved the image. We have much sharper detail and even crisper color. All right, let's walk through a quick and dirty step-by-step -step of how to do strategic frequency acquisition. I'm going to assume you're already familiar with defending against moonlight. And if not, then divert for just a moment and study that video, six strategies to keep on imaging when the moon is bright. You can find the link below in the description. 
Step one is just to acquire your image information. Apart from applying moon defense strategies, such as not shooting too close to the moon, in which case the moon will drown out any detail no matter which strategy you use, you would just follow your ordinary filming procedures. Information acquired from dark moon nights will be your base information, and information acquired during bright moon nights will be your high layer information. Step two, go through stacking, sharpening, histogram stretching, and noise removal, same as normal. Be sure to derive your star plate from your base information. Now, something to bear in mind is that if you get base information from more than one dark night, you can add it to your total information later on in a layer-based photo editor, such as Affinity Photo, if you know how. This video is not on that technique. I'll cover that in some other video in the future. Or, alternatively, you can just stack all of your base information together. So, if you filmed on three separate nights where the moon was dark to relatively dark, and you feel that'll make good base information, you can just stack it all together. However, this is very important. Do not stack high layer information together. So if you also shot the same DSO during the three nights of the full moon, stack and make three separate images from the information. This is important because moonlight can refract differently from night to night depending on atmospheric conditions. So you'll want to tailor how you add each night's information to the image. Step three, in your layer-based photo editor, for me that's Affinity Photo, add your high layer information from each night. Remember the high layer information is from nights when there was a bright moon. Add each image separately. Remember you want to keep all the high layer information separate and use the frequency separation tool to tear each one of those images apart, dividing them into their low frequency and high frequency information. Discard all the low frequency information from each of those bright moon nights and export and save each high frequency layer as a lossless TIFF. When you export it, note the date that you shot it on to help you remember what information you're working with when you add it back to the image. Step four, also frequency separates your base layer. Technically, it's the exact same procedure. Label those layers as date and base and remember to keep the low and high frequency information from your base layer. Step five, begin a new image by adding your base layer information to it. Put the low frequency information as the bottom layer and then add the high frequency information that was shot with the low frequency information as the layer just above the low frequency information. Composite the base layer high frequency information to the low frequency information using the linear light composite mode. Use synergistic sharpening to sharpen the base layer high frequency information. Do not use gamma constriction on the base high frequency information. Step six, add the high layer high frequency information and composite it to the image using the soft light composite mode. Now, make all the high layer high frequency information invisible except for the lowest layer. In that layer, open a levels tool and drag the gamma slider up until that information looks as sharp as possible without the information devolving into grittiness. As a rule of thumb, I watch the brighter and mid-range brightness regions of an image. Those areas will draw the eye, and that's where I want the sharpness to look the best. The darkest regions of an image are likely to devolve into grittiness. That's just because, since there is no information there, the algorithms don't really know what to do with that dark area. So, their attempts to sharpen it turn into... chaos. However, you can easily remove that chaos just by erasing it out. In Affinity Photo, you would just open up the paintbrush tool, set it for mask, and set it for the color black, which tells the paintbrush tool to erase any effects created by a tool. And then you can erase out the effects of the level tool in the darker regions of an image. Step seven, add back your star plate. In a layer-based photo editor, the easiest way to do this is put your star plate in as the top layer and switch it to the screen composite mode. The screen composite mode tells a layer to add its light to the lower layers. If you find the stars are overwhelming, just open a curves tool in the star layer, grab the curves tool one quarter to one half from the bottom, click and drag the light curve to the right, which will create an inverse C curve, which will round and dim the stars. Do so until the stars are the brightness that you want. And that's it. That's the process in its simplest and abridged form. To find more complete information, just look at the video how to do astrophotography during any phase of the moon. Doubtless, you'll want to do a lot of other editing to any image you produce as well. I know I do. In fact, the finished image that you're seeing here had further adjustments made to color and sharpness. Additional steps that I take are using the Levels tool to increase the brightness as well as adjust the black points and gamma of the low frequency base information. Further modifying composite modes on specific high frequency information as well as changing composites on certain tools. And application of a topic I haven't had a chance to create a video about yet creating brightness tailor evolved stretches for images that have very differing luminosity regions. I promise to get to that one soon. 
And finally, I may take liberties with a curse tool or channel mixer tool to make an image look more like it was made using an HOO or SHO color scheme. You may have noticed I was going for that with the previous image, but then I decided to make it more my own color scheme. Thank you for watching, and if you have any questions or observations, please leave them in the comments section below. And if you don't mind, please take a moment to hit those like and subscribe buttons. Now, get out there and shoot that sky.